Hey gang, welcome back to another Dynamics video. What are we talking about today? We're talking about instantaneous centers. And really I want to start off with talking about instantaneous centers of round parts. Why do I need to know this? Isn't this just like relative motion analysis that we've already covered where you had to find the velocities and you had angular velocity. Y'all remember omega, which my students kind of call, they call it booty. I don't know why they call it booty, but anyway, omega cross R, right? Remember, do you remember this equation from relative motion? We've got a new equation for instantaneous centers. I'm going to explain all this to you, but the equation is omega equals V divided by R X with respect to the instantaneous center, wherever the heck that is. So, uh, that's going to be booty over virtual reality, VR. Okay, can you remember that? Can you remember that? I don't know. Okay, so what in the world is an instantaneous center? An instantaneous center is if, if a body is rotating in space, I don't care where it is, how it's rotating, there is a point on in space for that body that that whole body is rotating around okay and we call that point the instantaneous center so if i dr draw the velocity as as a body is rotating in space right as i draw the velocity of any point on that body okay the direction the vector of that velocity if i draw a perpendicular line from that think of it as moment right Think of velocity as force and distance as R, right? R is distance. Force times distance makes what? Moment. That's spinning force, right? Guess what omega is? Angular velocity. How fast is it spinning, okay? So if you think of this as just omega equals, it, it's, it, it's like moment, and then this is force and this is um, uh, distance, this might make a little bit more sense, okay? So let's look at a wheel, okay? Let's say that I'm point right here, okay? I'm gonna call this point A. I'll make this point B. I don't know, there's point C over there, okay? Now, if I ask you, if this wheel is rotating this way, okay? If it's rotating there, that way and I ask you, where is the velocity of of point A pointed, like where would, what would you say? Well, I heard you. Some of you said, yo, it's up, right? It's rotating that way, right? It's not up. This is not the velocity. Well, that's not how you make Vs. Oh, Lordy, made a giant smudgy. This is not the velocity of A, no, because if, if A is moving up, then guess what? Here in a second, this, this point of the wheel is going to be up here. No, it's going to be over there, right? Because A is actually, it does have an up component. Okay, we'll call that, we'll call that Y. But it also has, right, a, a velocity in the whoop, X direction. That's an X. Pretend that's right, X. Okay. And so if you think about it, the velocity is actually over here, right? Because A is fixing to be over here, isn't it, right? So the velocity is actually in another direction like this. C, same thing. The velocity is going this way. B, the velocity is going this way, right? And so if we were to draw a perpendicular line, uh, where would that go? Okay, now if I ask you, Where's the point that every one of those points is rotating around? I think a lot of you would probably say, well, everything's rotating about the middle of the wheel, isn't it? Well, that's not actually correct, okay? If you draw a perpendicular line, right, this is, mm, this is not very good. <laughs> Let me make that 90 degrees. 90 degrees, there's V of A, right? This is 90 degrees, it will go to the bottom of that part. It is rotating about, round parts are rotating about this contact point down here. The whole system is rotating about here, okay? B or C, I didn't get any of these drawn very good, did I? 
will be down here. C is traveling. That's 90 degrees. Okay. Uh, B is rotating about here. It's traveling uh, uh, 90 degrees. Okay. I didn't draw that very good. Um, as it, as all these, these vectors, these, these, uh, velocity vectors, if I draw a perpendicular line, they should all go through this point down here, not this point here, which you would think they would, but that would only be true. That would be true. If all of the velocities at any point, I don't care where I draw the point at any point, the velocity is tangential to the path. There is an acceleration tangential to the path that isn't there, but there's also an acceleration normal to the path. We know that that particle is actually moving like so. Okay. So this is kind of confusing. So you got to get this right in your head. This point down here is actually the instantaneous center. Okay. So at that particular snapshot in time, this point right here is rotating about there. Okay. It's a little confusing. I know. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and apply it to this problem over here. Okay. The same thing. They've got a wheel instead of a wheel. We got a gear. So it is a round thing, right? And I got a little gear and I got a big gear and they're in contact with this rack gear. It's like a rack and pinion gear. Okay. So the gear set rolls along the gear rack at a speed of eight meters per second. So this thing is moving horizontally to the right. Uh, eight meters per second. Find the angular velocity of, of gear of the gear, which is omega booty. Okay. Uh, and then find the velocity of point A. And again, point A, you might think, oh, the velocity of point A, that's straight up. It's really not point A. He wants to be over here in a second. So his velocity is really over here. Okay. And again, if I draw that tangential line, it's going to be at the bottom of this gear, just like the wheel rolling across the ground. Also keep in mind, that's not really round and this is not to scale. Okay. If it was, those lines would be so perfect. You would be amazed. So pretend. Okay. But anyway, that's where the, inst this is where the instantaneous center is. Well, it's going to be directly below here and at the bottom of the part, like so. Okay. There you go. There's my instantaneous center. Okay. So the way I drew this is, is V the velocity over the instantaneous center is equal to Omega. Okay. So what do we know? Okay. Let's talk little gear. Okay. Let's talk little gear. Okay. So what we're doing here is we're going to take this guy here. We know the little gear. We know the diameter. We know this. He also has, the center point right here, because this is the one that's moving eight meters per second, right? It also, that middle point also has an instantaneous center of perpendicular blip, 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 blip right there. And where these two lines intersect, where these two velocity lines intersect, that's always the instantaneous center. Okay. So what do they want to know? How, what is this down here? What the heck is that? Okay. Let's call this point B over here. Okay. And I want to find, you know, I know the velocity of point V is that, right? But I need to know this, which in this case would be R, B with respect to the instantaneous center. Okay. And, and I always think of it this way. This, the bottom guy is the start point. This is the end point. Okay. And also remember, I know y'all remember this stuff because you're statics wizards. Go all the way back to statics. What was R? Do you remember when we did this back in statics when you had R cross F? Do you remember that? Was that too far back? Right? Equals moment. Okay. What was R? R is the position vector. It's just how to get to grandma's house. And if we had R, A, B, what did we do? We did... That means the vector goes from A to B. We did B minus A. Okay. This R here is the same thing with this respect to business. Okay. So it starts at IC and it ends in B. So if it's going to go from IC to B, we do what? 
B minus IC. So R, B with respect to IC is equal to, right? What is that? What is that going to be? That's going to be um, um, B minus IC. There's a minus there. Okay. And IC, I don't know. Let's just call that the origin, shall we? Yeah, let's just call that zero, zero. And then where is point B? Uh, that's zero in the X and point four in the Y, right? And so zero minus zero, zero, and then it's four, okay? Point four. So R is just the distance from one point to another. Now, they're going to tell you that this is derived from that. And you might say to yourself, self, that don't look nothing like that. Nothing. What happened to this cross product over here? Okay. Well, here's the deal. We use this equation when we have components of motion. For instance, we've got some kind of linkage and as this side goes down, this side goes this way, right? So this one's moving in the X direction while this one's moving in the Y direction. So I have two different kind of components. I have an I component and a J component. <coughs> so I have to think about it like a vector, right? Remember, that's what cross product is, is vector. Well, over here, this really is the same. This is just turned into zero. And instead of being you needing a vector, I don't need a vector anymore, okay? Do y'all remember when we had this? We had a wrench, right? And we had a force on the wrench like this, F, right? And this was our R over to where the thing is like rotating around, okay? Right, if I had that, do I need to take this and break it into components? If I know that that is the perpendicular distance? So in on these instantaneous centers, everything is always 90 degrees, 90 degrees, right? So it's just force, or in this case, velocity, times r times distance. So just what is the distance from the point of interest to the instantaneous center? That's all there is to this, okay? So that this we don't have to do all this vector stuff. We can do this with just r, b with respect to ic. It's just the distance from b to the instantaneous center. So it's just 0.4, okay? So we can use this equation here. To find omega. Omega is what we're looking for, right? A, find the angular velocity of the gear. Now, do you agree that the angular velocity of this gear is the same as that gear? They're tied together, right? One can't move at a different rate than the other one, right? And so we have this. Omega is equal to velocity. Do we know that? Bam. Yes, we do. Eight meters per second divided by distance. Do we know that? That's R. Uh, yeah, we know that. 0.4. Okay, and so what do we get there? Is that 20? That's 20, isn't it? Put in your calculator and check. 8 divided by 0.4 equals, yes, you can do math, 20. Okay, and remember, the meters are going to cancel out. That leaves me with radians per second, okay? So, the angular velocity of the gear is 20 radians per second. And guess what? This gear is 20 radians per second, and this gear is 20 radians per second, okay? So can I take that information and solve now for the velocity of point A, okay? Uh, the answer is yes, and it's actually uh, quite simple, right? Because we have the same equation. Do we know omega? Do we know omega? We just found it, 20 rads per second is equal to, right, V. Do we know V? Nope, that's what we're looking for. V of A divided by what? How far is it from A to the instantaneous center? How far is that? Mmm, that's hard. That's not hard, actually. This side here, 0.4. This side here, which is the big radius, is 0.6, and so you know what? From here to the to there, 
is what we call in the business a hypotenuse, which is what? 0.4 squared plus 0.6 squared square root, right? How much is that? How much is that? 0.4 squared plus 0.6 squared, no, not 62, 6 squared equals 0.52 inverse square root, second answer equals, bam, 0.721 right? So if that's 0 0.721 equals 0 0.721. Take that, multiply it by 20. The velocity of point A is equal to uh, uh, times 20. 14.42 meters per second. And if they want a direction, I could find that too, right? Because I got an angle here. I just need to find that little angle there uh, and add that to 90 and I got the angle too. So, But they didn't ask me for the direction, so I'm not going to find it. So there you go. But I could because I know that it's perpendicular to that R vector, isn't it? Okay. So that is kind of an introduction to instantaneous centers on round parts, okay? Let's do some kind of crazy like linkage problem where a couple of things are together and let's see if we can do an instantaneous center of that thing. Stick around, let's do one more.